Good evening, everyone. I hope I'm audible to all. So welcome to today's session. Our topic for the day is piping components and walls part one. So let's meet the trainer for the day. Our trainer for the day is Mr. Chandra Mohan S. He's working as a senior engineer in mechanical in iFluids Engineering. He has over 12 plus years of experience in oil and gas, chemical and petrochemical industries. He has expertise in various domains, including plant maintenance, oil and gas plant direction, testing and commissioning. He has played a crucial role in numerous turnkey projects at iFluids Engineer over the year. We heartily welcome you to the session, sir. Thank you for taking time and uh, being here. Uh, we'll proceed with our training session for the day. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anupama, for the introduction. Uh, so now I can share my screen. Uh, yes, sir. Please share your screen. I hope this one, uh, my screen is visible to all. Yes, sir, visible. Okay, right. so uh, good evening to all. Uh, before we get to, to this topic now, I want to appreciate uh, everyone uh, who attending this uh, uh, training uh, presentation uh, because uh, we are spending our time uh, from August 2nd, you are attending this uh, training session, I mean, this uh, whole uh, training program. So for that, I, I want to appreciate you, everyone, for attending this uh, training. So as Anupama earlier told, my name is uh, Chandra Mohan. So today, uh, our training uh, topic is piping component and walls. So we are going to take this uh, uh, topic in uh, two days, actually, part one. Today, part one. Tomorrow, will be a part two. So today, we will cover uh, uh, piping components. And then tomorrow we will cover uh, valves. So like that I plan. So uh, if I go very fast, you can uh, stop me anywhere. You can raise your hand and you can uh, stop me. So we will, I will explain again. So five to six will be the training session. After that, uh, six to six thirty will be our uh, uh, query. Query is there. We will uh, solve that one. No issue. So today's topic, as I said, piping component and walls. So from the end of this presentation, what you will know? So what you will know at the end of this presentation means to identify the piping components, like uh, what are all the types of fittings, everything you can be able to identify at the end of this presentation. And then identify the type of walls by seeing it what type of wall? There is a, a different types of walls we are using in industries. So, what are all the type of wall you can be able to understand? You can even able to identify those walls, and then knows the functions of each fittings and walls. So, what this wall is going to do? Why we are installing here? Everything you will know, and then knows where to use which fittings and walls. There is a lot of fittings are there. A lot of types of wall with uh, different types of operation uh, mode, everything, uh, so many walls are there. So you will know where to use those walls and then know, and then knows how to choose those walls or fittings according to the application. In which application? Application means uh, service. In which fluid we are going to use this valve or uh, piping components. So you, you know how to choose those. And then where to install those. So after choose where to install the fittings and walls though so at the end of this presentation i hope you will know you will came to know these all things so first we see a piping system uh, if I have, uh, my topic is the piping component and wall so we are uh, seeing that piping component only in that piping system piping means what a piping is an assembly of various components like uh, fittings pipe fittings are there in uh, upcoming slide we will 
uh, in detail we will uh, talk about uh, fittings valves everything so these components like pipe fittings valves instrument controlling elements put together with a proper method of joint functionally to transfer transport a fluid from one place to other place let's say from tank to other tank or from underground uh, pond to some other elevated area so this is a piping system so there will be pipeline you may come across as, i mean in previous topics i hope they have covered uh, pms piping material specification piping pain ready everything in that there will be a pipeline this is a piping piping is different uh, pipeline is different pipeline is a, a straight length which will run from one place to other place without any much uh, fittings or much uh, components like valves everything that is a straight pipeline so piping system is it is uh, covering of uh, valves controlling elements like uh, temperature controlling element pressure controlling element isolation valves and then some uh, uh, strainers these are all covering everything now this is piping system so i hope clear if any doubt you can ask later no issue this piping component uh, includes uh, major pipes flanges valves fittings fittings means uh, there is uh, numerous types of fittings is there elbows reducers uh, branches connections these are these are called under the common name fittings same like valves also they have different types of valves gate valve globe valve ball valve needle valve there so many valves are there it comes under valves flanges also same we have different types of flanges we will see in detail in upcoming slides and then uh, special items such as expansion joints expansion joints nothing but uh, bellow you may there is two name they will tell expansion joints some bellow rubber bellow metallic bellow so those kind of things are there and then gaskets and bolting so these are also where all the flanges is coming that area gasket and bolting will be there so these are all the piping uh, components we are going to see and then first we have uh, see pipes right so we are going to see in pipe i hope everybody knows about uh, i mean i have seen pipe who are all entered in the uh, industries in your implant training or uh, uh, if 2022 pass road people are there they may enter the some other uh, industries they could see about uh, pipes so pipe is nothing but a tubular product tubular product used to convey a fluid this is generally identified as a nominal bore so why uh, that later i will explain identified as nominal bore or nominal pipe size pipes have fixed outside diameter od means od in under variable inside diameter based on the thickness selected so why we are telling a pipe now this is a pipe this is a od is constant if it is 1 inch if it is 1 inch means it is od will be 33.3 mm but id will be uh, different id will be different based on the thickness if uh, is schedule we, we will call as a schedule the thickness we will call as a schedule if schedule goes on increasing that id will get uh, reduced that wall thickness is we are seeing here na this is wall this is a uh, wall thickness this is od of the pipe this is id of the pipe if the wall thickness is increase the od will not, there will not be any change in od there will be change in id only this id with this wall thickness keeps on increasing this id will get decrease so this is a pipe the code used for pipe selections are for welded and seamless carbon steel pipes we are using uh, asme b36.10 american society of mechanical engineers asme b36.10 is welded and seamless carbon steel pipes that is a two major moc which we are using in uh, industries there will be a number of alloy steel is there pvc pipes is there hdp ldp uh, so many moc is there but major category is uh, carbon steel pipe and stainless steel pipe stainless steel pipe is uh, asme b36.19 welder and seamless carbon steel pipes are 36.10 the different sizes and thickness which are available as specified in above standard thickness of pipe is generally designated by schedule let earlier i told na this is schedule so we uh, thickness we are uh, in industry standard we are telling as a schedule we schedule 40 schedule 80 schedule 120 schedule 160 this schedule 40 means for 1 inch there will be some other 1 uh, inch schedule 45 means that will be standard is there 
od will be same for schedule 40 and schedule 80 od of the 1 inch pipe will be same but the id will be differ because this wall thickness is getting increased if the schedule is increased okay uh, method of joining pipes first we have seen pipes so now we are seeing uh, method of joining pipes how can we can uh, join the pipes first major uh, method is a uh, butt weld that is a uh, welding uh, type second one is uh, socket weld third is threaded end screwed end we will call another name is screwed end in most of our residential building our houses we are using this kind of Uh, joining method threaded another uh, fourth one is a uh, flanged end fifth one is coupling that is also coming threaded but uh, it is a quick really for a quick uh, decouple and coupling we are using this uh, coupling and then special item like expansion joints here right on a bellow 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 will be a uh, other uh, a part to connect one pipe to other pipe so these are all the method of joining pipes first we see a uh, butt weld if you see here na this is a butt weld where the id od of the say will be same where we are going to weld na this is a welding method this is a butt weld uh, you see here this is the pipe this will be uh, this is a flange or maybe other pipe whatever it is where we are connecting together is a butt weld you see here this is a root gap is a uh, bevel we are taking here we are taking uh, this cut is means a bevel end so that's why we another uh, bevel end this one after that we will do welding it's a root gap if that weld matter will be penetrate into the id of the pipe to be become a stronger uh, joint okay this code reference is asme b16.9 it is used in uh, most piping system wherever the uh, critical pipelines like uh, steam pipelines Uh, high pressure uh, gas lines uh, wherever the high pressure crude wherever the high pressure liquid item high temperature liquid whatever we are handling those areas these type of weld i mean a joining method will be a preferable one this is mostly 2 uh, inch and above only they will go for this kind of uh, butt weld joining method generally it is used for most application Uh, advantage is ndt ndt means i hope you all know this ndt is non destructive testing like a radiographic test is an advantage in this method we can uh, test this weld joint whether it is uh, qualified it is okay or not like that we have we can check with a radiographic test and we can uh, uh, pull proof method and then it is uh, difficult in small sizes especially for thin wall which are all having a thin wall means nothing but the thickness of the pipe wherever the thickness is very less schedule 5 schedule 10 and all is there so that area it will be welding will be a, a problem so we don't have a, a much thickness so we cannot uh, weld it so this is the one of the uh, joining method of pipe it is butt weld second one is uh, socket weld this this is a uh, size frequently used in 1/2 uh, one, one inch and below sizes you see here before you have seen a weld together the same id of the pipe here if you see this is the pipe and this is the uh, flange or coupling whatever it may be so here if you see this pipe is going inside that uh, fittings and we are welding here doing only fillet weld this is called butt weld and this one is called fillet weld so this is uh, this is socket weld this flange is there socket weld couplings are there so uh, this is one uh, another type of uh, joining the pipe in the flange or coupling here we see one gap is there this gap is for uh, some um, expansion everything you know they will give this because while uh, connecting the transferring the fluid this pipe may try to expand if there is no gap it may crack at the weld area so they maintaining this gap so this is another type socket weld a uh, third one is threaded or screwed most of you know about this one because in our uh, home also we are using this uh, threaded type so this is the female part this is male part so here we will use a threaded one if if it is required we can do here seal weld here they mention uh, optional seal weld if it is required but most of the cases we will not weld here only with using the sealing tape if it may be mostly it will be teflon 
PTFE, we will uh, using a sealed tape and we will thread in. This is another type of uh, method of joining the pipe. It is mostly used in low critical uh, liquids, like uh, mostly it is used in water and air applications, where uh, it, it will not be recommendable for a, a flammable or a high pressure um, battery, it is not uh, recommendable. And also where it is required to frequent removal, for some pressure gauges and all, if you see, it will be a threaded one. Because if you weld it pressure gauge, now it, you cannot remove. If it is faulty, you cannot remove. So better for easy removal purpose, they go for uh, this type of threaded joints. And then uh, flanges joint. This flange, uh, first we have seen butt weld, welded type, in that butt weld and socket weld. After that, we have seen third one is a threaded type. This fourth one is a flanged type. These flanges are used to connect the pipes with equipment or vessels or valves. It provides easy access for removal, cleaning, inspection, and modification of any equipment. These flanges are normally used above one and a half inch sizes. Why we wherever the we are connecting the pipelines with the other equipments, other pump or valves, or any controller uh, instrument con controlling element. So we go for this uh, flange one. So in, compared to screwed one, flange one is a, a recommended one. It will be uh, holding uh, more pressure because this flange and all uh, pressure rating is there. So it will, based on the application, based on the pressure and temperature, we can choose the uh, rating of the flange. If you see this picture, there will be a num uh, different types of flanges are there. So one by one, we are going to see in detail. These are called weld neck, uh, socket weld, scrub bend. There are so many types are there. We are going to see one by one. So better we skip this one. The flange material, ASTM A105 is for a carbon steel, A182 is for a alloy steel, A182 grade 316304 stainless steel. That is material based on the application. Before we choose the any fittings or any valves, we need to seize the application where we are going to use this one. For a high temperature service, we cannot go for a low grade material. For the high pressure service, we cannot low grade. For the water and the simple air service, which is going to handling only raw water, only drinking water, there we are, we cannot use stainless steel. So cost, is, everything is money, right? So everywhere in industry, everything is money. So the design, our design basis, everything will be based on the, our budget only. So where it is required, there only we have to use. That is the main thing we have to, before designing, before choose anything, we have to keep in mind uh, in industry, everything is money. So uh, that one we have to keep in mind uh, while uh, choosing any material. Okay, uh, in uh, flanges, there will be a standard is there, American National Standard Institute is there. That is American, uh, sorry, ANC flange pressure and rating. The term, what is flange rating means? Is, uh, they will mention uh, before you have seen this flanges is there now this have pressure rating is there so based on the, the uh, pressure rating we will choose for our uh, services so flange that flange withstand at increasing temperatures flange with higher pressure rating or stronger than the flanges with lower ratings flanges made in different materials so different pressure temperature performance at the same rating so there will be According to ANSI standard, there are seven flange pressure ratings are available. Uh, we generally we call the uh, PSA pound. Uh, this is pound per square inch. You all came across uh, the uh, unit right for pressure. There will be number of units is there kg per centimeter square. A bar is there. Pascal is there. So in that PSA, we are following that American standard. So we are they following inches. I mean every pound. So we are following the pressure. Uh, sorry, pound per square inch. There will be 150 pound rating, 300 pound rating, 400, 600, like that it will keep on increase up to 2500. So in that way, if a separate chart is there for the 150 pound rating flange, what will be there, what it can uh, withstand the pressure at which temperature it can withstand. So based on the chart, we will choose the flange according to the pressure where we are going to install it. For uh, say example in boiler where it is producing 40 bar, so there we are going to install one flange means we have to see the chart and then we have to choose the pressure rating of the flange. So if it is 40 bar, you cannot go for 155 PSI. If it is a low pressure rating, so we cannot go there. So we have to see the chart accordingly. We have to select the pressure rating of the flanges. 
and then you have, what will be the effect of uh, pressure class in uh, flanges you see the picture is clearly uh, showing if it is 150 pound rating there will be thickness will be less if it is uh, go on increase 2500 the thickness of the flange is also increases obviously it will increase because the pressure is is going to handle is more so it has to withstand the pressure and temperature the temperature and the thickness of the flange will increase and then what other things will increase and this number of bolt you are seeing now this uh, pcd this number of holes will be uh, differ for 150 pound rating there will be uh, four holes for 300 pound rating there will be uh, eight holes or six holes for uh, 2500 pound rating there will be 12 numbers of holes in the same size as i am telling if it is 1 inch uh, 150 pound rating flange means there will be a 150 pound rating there will be a four number of holes same for 1 inch for 600 pound rating na there will be uh, different in hole size but if it is small size na they will increase the flange thickness and then a bolt hole dia will be get increase let's say for a 1 inch 150 pound rating flanges we are using m12 size bolt na and then for if it is same for 1 inch 600 pound rating the size of the bolt obviously it will get increased up to m16 uh, or m20 like that it will increase there will be separate chart is there accordingly we will uh, choose that one and then this one is a uh, flange types based on the face so if you see here in this picture now if you see face this is the face we are where it is going to seal the liquid or fluid now we call it is as a face this is a flange this is a uh, Uh, where it is uh, gasket is going to sit here this four holes is for connecting the flanges so uh, different types are there here it is a flat face uh, second one is raised face flat face will be nothing but there will be this is the hub right here will be bolt we are going to connect here only that uh, fluid is going to uh, travel so here that there will be no different in the uh, surface that is called flat face where we are going where we can uh, use this flat face means uh, low temperature or low pressure where we are going to use like uh, in any industries if you go they will use, they will have raw water they will have drinking water will have a uh, cooling water service and then uh, air uh, i mean utility air for cleaning purpose so these kind of things uh, it will be less pressure only Mo mostly it will be a 6 bar or 6 7 bar so in those kind of area na uh, we can use this flat face and then raised face this is raised face if you see here this area only the gasket is going to seal so this area there will be some projection will be there uh, 3 to 4 mm there will be some projection sorry 2 to 3 mm there some projection will be there this area that uh, gasket is going to seal so the high pressure rating we will use this uh, kind of raised face in flange shelf they will we will mention while uh, mentioning the flange in our uh, isometrics or in our uh, mto we will give specification like that let's say 1 inch 150 pound rating rf they will call rf rf means nothing but raised face if it is low service 1 inch 150 ff flat face and then ncb 16.5 is the uh, standard of their uh, flanges then it will come astm i mean uh, grade according to the carbon steel or uh, uh, stainless steel that uh, full specification will come in that we have to mention this it is raised face or flat face we have to mention and third one is ring joint if you see here this is the ring joint the the shape itself is mentioning yeah, it is a ring joint in this area where the gasket will sit advantage over this uh, flat face sorry raised face to this ring joint is the gasket will not uh, move away because while connecting if you are positioning in uh, uh, between the flanges you are positioning in the gasket na while tightening or while uh, handling na it may it may come down it may disturb it may uh, come out of the sealing area then it will start to leak so the, in the ring joint area na it will perfectly it will sit in this slot so it will not move so that uh, uh, there is no uh, possible for leakages by mishandling uh, fourth one is uh, tangan groove here it is uh, uh, type is tangan groove here there will be some stub will be there like projection so it will uh, compress this where, where we going to sit the gasket so it will compress that one where we are tightening with this bolt net so it will compress the gasket right and the fifth one is male and female and i mean it's a it's a male flange it's a female flange this area that gasket going to seal 
so it will connect together it will there not be any leakage this is a flange type based on the faces okay based on the faces it will be flange type and then a standard types of flange other type of flange is well neck flange slip on flange threaded flange socket well a lap joint blind joint so first we have seen this is types of flanges based on the faces that means uh, where it going to that the gasket is going to seal now based on that we have some type all depend upon the application only and then here it is a well neck flange slip on flange threaded flange socket well lap joint blind flange these are all the uh, other type of uh, i mean type of flanges based on the some other applications so well neck flange first we are going to see well neck flange uh in this well neck flange if you see this picture by seeing the picture itself by seeing the if, if you practically if you are seeing the flange itself you can came to know this is a well the neck some it is a neck na this is some projection is there this is called well neck flange this this projection is showing what it is raised face before we have seen na that raised face that one only this raised face if there is no projection it will be well neck flange but it will be flat face if it is projection is there it will be raised face this area only gasket is going to see and then this one is welded this is pipe this one is uh, welding portion so the name is self mentioning it is a weld neck flange we are going to do a bud weld another type we have seen the type of joint na before uh, bud weld socket weld a flange end like that so if this is a bud weld type so this flange is used normally in high pressure and high temperature applications that require an unrestricted flow of the fluid converted by the piping what will be the advantage in this pipe na we can test this weld weldment if it is socket weld na you cannot do a radiography test why i will explain later other slide this is a bud joint na you can test this weldment whether it is okay or not you can test uh, through the circumference of that joint and then you can say okay this is this is not going to leak we already took rt i mean radiography test so it will not leak so this is the advantage of this flange we will use in high pressure and high pre temperature services we will uh, prefer this flange and where it is uh, if it is low pressure also if it is going for a permanent vessel like you are going to install one tank that the tank will be is going to handling only uh, water but the tank will be a permanent one we are not going to replace the tank in near future okay it will be a minimum of 15 to 20 years it has to uh, serve, serve so in that area we can we cannot compromise on the quality so in that area instead of going for socket well instead of going for a threaded end we can go for this type of flanges i mean i am telling about the uh, tank inlet and house, outlet nozzles will be your welding at the shell na that area we can prefer this weldment but as per application it is not required uh, because of it is low temperature and low pressure service water it is not required but as a designer i mean as a engineer we can uh, suggest this one because it is going to be a permanent one if it is leaking what will happen that whole plant will be under shutdown even though it is a water it is a uh, important thing for uh, any process industries or water will be a convert to is it may be a raw water the raw water only going to a dm water then dm water only going to a boiler then only you can get steam then only you, are, you can run the plant so ultimately it is important so if it is a permanent uh, vessel means you can go for well neck flange that is what i am trying to say uh, even though because based on the chart you cannot simply prefer uh, this one low pressure low temperature or i go for a, a pvc pipe i go for a screwed in that we cannot do uh, we have to apply our uh, what experience uh, then only we can go for this flange so next one is a slip on flange this is a, a, this is also a, a, what commonly used in the uh, industries a slip on flange is connected to the pipe or fittings by two fillet welds if you see here na weldment the name is they are telling fillet weld it is not bud joint this is bud joint where we are connecting the two material i mean two items it is the fillet weld here here you cannot do bud weld here only you can do fillet weld like a structure somewhere we are building and that is fillet weld so here application they are mainly used for fluids at low pressure or with little risk of 
it is very common in to find these flanges today in cooling water lines fire water lines like i said na it is low low pressure low temperature means they will prefer for uh, cooling water lines like that and then substance such as low pressure steam means but always keeping in mind that material is disturbed is at low pressure and working and not demanding okay right advantage is this is a low cost compared to this uh, well neck flange this is low cost why it is low cost the weight of the flange is less because if you see here this picture the hole will be a flange na so they ultimately i'm telling it's a cost right so based on the weightage of the material whether it is carbon steel or stainless steel so it will be uh, material cost will be high in this uh, well neck flange here material cost will be low here one advantage is that you can do fillet weld here if it is required you can do id of the uh, flange also you can do welding but mostly we will not do here because this is self uh, more than enough because we are going to use in uh, water service or uh, air service so critical service so outside welding is more than enough if we have doubt we can do inside also because this joint you cannot do rt you can do only dpt we call die penetrant test i mean identity test in you have studied in engineering na uh, destructive test and uh, non destructive test uh, we call dt and uh, ndt destructive it means you have to break the if number of if you are producing 100 uh, uh, pieces you can randomly select one or two pieces and you have to break it until it break you have to conduct the test na in uh, civil and structural you have to tensile test compression you have did na that one is destructive test where ndt test we will not uh, destruct the I mean damage the product we will uh, test the without uh, destructing you know, that is called non destructive that is die penetrant that one later we will see if that follows uh, in upcoming uh, training now i will explain because i am the person who take another uh, four days i am only going to take uh, other two topics so if you have any doubt that time also if time allows we can uh, see that entity also so i will go moving to other one uh, threaded flange like i explained this is before we have seen some threaded joint now this is threaded type of flange this flange inside if you see there will be some female thread is there threaded portion this is the pipe here it is also is a male thread so this we can screw in this flange this is a type of another flange so this where we can use this type of flanges means where welding is not allowable for example if pvc pipe you are using or some hdp pipe i mean uh, some other not weldable material you are using so that area you can use this threaded type of flange because pvc you cannot weld it you cannot solder it so you can go for obviously have to go for this threaded type of flange also there will be uh, it is not uh, recommendable in gas service or high pressure service or high temperature service it is not recommendable one so this is Uh, for uh, uh, residential houses for office buildings we can go for this uh, threaded type of uh, one and then uh, this one is socket welded flange uh, before we have we seen some socket weld pipe connecting now so that one we have seen coupling here we have seen this this is the socket weld flange so three type major flanges we are seeing first one we have seen well neck flange that is butt weld high pressure high temperature high critical service we will use second one we have seen slip on flange that will be same like a, a socket weld flange but there will be no here there will be no socket it will be through we can do welding in outer of the pipe and the idea of the pipe also we can do welding i mean idea of the flange also we can do welding now we are seeing a socket weld flange in this it will the uh, pipe will be inserted into the flange and then here you can do weld this also fillet weld only this flange also you cannot do uh, ndt test i mean uh, sorry rt test you can do only die penetrant test only you can do this is fillet joint not butt joint so this application also socket weld flanges are used for small size and high pressure piping that do not transfer highly corrosive fluids because there will be why corrosive fluid they are mentioning na here some stagnation will be there because of this one is uh, socket weld some amount of fluid which we are handling we are handling some hydrofluoric acid or anything na it will stagnant here so it will corrode the flanges or pipe so it is not recommendable for the high corrosive or high uh, critical services 
so this is a socket weld type with the flange also if you see here last one you have seen here threaded here you are seeing socket this area is a stop up to here only you can insert because if this stoppage is there it will it will project here what will happen if the pipe if projects here the gasket will not be get sealed this is the main thing in slip on flanges there will be some other one disadvantage is there if in this is a pipe if you insert this pipe here now while seeing you have to see inside of the flange while fabrication and drilling instead of the flange this pipe should be in, in should be inside of the flange face if it is outside if it is some projected is 3 mm outside here if it is welded if you not see properly what will happen now if you connect other flange before gasket is getting touch with other flange this pipe will get which the, the flange so the gasket will not be sealed so that one you have to keep in mind before uh, selecting the flanges threaded flange you have seen socket weld flange and this one is a uh, lab joint flange uh, this one is uh, a lab joint flanges uh is only shape to the slip on flanges it will look like a slip on flanges we see this is a slip on flange this is the lab flange we calling as a other name is stub end flange this is stub end this is a lab joint we will call as a lab joint the use of lab joint flange in combination with the stub end is cost effective solution for stainless steel or nickel alloy okay if you so, okay you assume this one we are handling a, a highly corrosive liquid with the, uh, in this pipe so obviously we have to select the pipe according to the application a stainless steel one okay so this is the area where material will be contact inside the pipe but sorry but this flange you know, it is not going to handle with mean a contact with the a liquid so why we have to go for a stainless steel because ultimately it will increase the cost of the flange so what they will do they will make some pieces if you see here this picture ah uh, if you see this picture this is called stub end okay they will fabricate up to here this will be a same material this inside of the this uh, this portion is there na this area only gasket is going to seal at uh, bottom of this portion so they will fabricate this one only so there only uh, this material only we are going to fabricate in the high cost material like alloy material or nickel minimum monel or whatever it has to alloy whatever it is we are going to uh, fabricate so where we are going to connect where we are going to connect this flange portion is not going to contact with the liquid so we can reduce the cost so that is what uh, here one advantage is this one and also if it is pvc pipe okay if so assume this is pvc pipe other pvc pipe you are connecting so if it is make with a pvc material flange if you tighten with the bolt net this pvc flange may get uh, broken because this is a pvc material right you cannot full tight you cannot do the uh, more tight here so in that application they will go for the a carbon steel flange or some ga coated flange they will go for this type of uh, um, lab I mean hub they will connect the pvc uh, flanges together this is the advantage and then in some other area if it is a, a stainless steel they will go for a stainless steel uh, stub end like this another one they will go for carbon steel lab joint So this is a one advantage based on the application only and then based on the cost if you have more money you can go for uh, stub end mean slip on flange or weld neck flange for a, a stainless steel item and then again i am telling if it is vessel if it is a high pressure vessel if it is going to be a permanent one you are not going to disturb and all you can go for a full full material the same material i mean uh, stainless steel okay if it is pipeline or you are going to frequently you are going to remove then you can go for these types of uh, uh, flanges so it will save our cost and then this is blind flange the name itself it's mentioning it is a blind flange there will not be any hole in these flanges where it is we are going to using some header so that one we are the end of the header we will provide this blind flange to stop the uh, flow so in fire water headers in cooling water headers in raw water headers na so in 3 uh, years one 4 years once we will do the uh, cleaning mean at the one end we will remove this flange we will flush out the sediments we will inspect the pipelines id if it is a bigger size we will inspect the id of the pipe we will do thickness survey everything we will do 
So in that area, we can go for this uh, blind flanges. And where we are going to, if in his vessels or tanks, there will be some spare nozzles will be there. So currently, may you use the inlet or outlet flanges in, in vessel. If you take now, pump in, pump out on flange will be there. Some vent flange will be there. Some brain will be there. So then in the drain, you can use this uh, blind flange. So whenever required, you can open this blind, you can drain out the material. In some other spares, spares will be there because in future you may go into install another one pump or you may connect with another pipeline. So that, is, that, that time you cannot go for welding. You cannot puncture the vessel because the vessel is already tested, hydro tested, everything. That may the tank may have flammable material. So you cannot that time you cannot do welding and all. So that so while fabricating itself, they will provide some spare nozzles. So in that we can provide this valve and then we have to provide this blind flange. So whenever required, we can open this blind flange, we can connect the other flange, like a well-neck flange or slipping flange. We can continue with the piping. That is the advantages and the application of these blind flanges. And then gasket. Continuously, we see this gasket. Uh, we have seen first, um, I'm again, I'm telling, first we have seen the connecting uh, types of uh, joint. First, we see butt weld, <clears throat> socket weld, threaded like that. After that, we have seen uh, flanges and then its types in this application based on the weldment. We have seen some types based on the gasket sealing face. We have seen some types, flat face, raised face, ring joint, everything. And now we are seeing the gasket where gasket is going to sit where in between the flanges because in anywhere flange to flange, it will not get sealed because if the flange is a hard surface. Other flange is a hard surface. Hard to hard, it will not be sealed. So hard to soft only, it will get sealed. Okay. So this is a, uh, gasket is a mechanical seal, which fills the space between the two or more mating surfaces, generally to prevent leakage from the joint objects. For screwed end, what we are, what I told now, for screwed end, female flange also will be some other material. Male, that nipple is there, and that also will be a, a same a material. Let's say carbon steel. Both are harder material. You cannot seal those. In those areas, we will use PTFE sealing tape. In some residential building or some other um, government, some uh, public places, you have seen they will use some threaded. Some thread also they may use. In some area, they will use some other tape. But in industries, now that those thread and all is not allowed. We are using PTFE, polytetrafluoroethylene. Uh, Teflon tapes are there. Uh, different sizes is there. So we will use that uh, tapes to connect the screwed end. But in this case, flanges, we will use a gasket. It will seal the leakage between the hard surfaces wherever. So say so it is a kind of a static seal and maintain the seal under various operating conditions in a mechanical assembly. Mostly used gaskets, piping or non-asbestos gaskets, gasket and a spiral wound gasket. This is a static seal gasket. Okay, it will not move. And then Rotary seal is different, that is mechanical seal, that is a different topic. So now we seeing only gasket, static seal in between the two static faces, that means a flange to flange. Okay, it may be not only flange to flange, from flange to pipe, I mean a pump, from flange to a compressor flange, nozzles, from a pipeline flange to a vessel flanges, whatever it is, just static seal. So there will be non-asbestos type. Another one is spiral wound gasket. Non-asbestos is the name itself. Is in as before it was asbestos was in uh, in service. After that, uh, government most of the government has banned that asbestos due to uh, environmental factor. So now we are using our non-asbestos uh, gaskets. Okay, these are all the first, this above picture you are seeing now. That is a Cut gasket, we will industries we will call it as a cut gasket. It may be a machine cut, it may be a water jet cut, it may be a tail, I mean man man-made gaskets, whatever it is. In some other uh, let's uh, let's say for uh, pumps na, for pump casing or some other compressor uh, portions is there as a turbine, everything, there will not be any standard. So those gaskets will be some sometime it will be supplied by the OEM, original equipment manufacturer, they will supply the gaskets. Because that gas can hold on non-standard sizes. If you go and ask for any other shop, na, if you go nearby shop, you can ask for one inch gasket, they will give. But if you go and ask for in your plant, if you go for some other pump gasket, na, they may don't have one. We have to once you have to purchase from OEM or you have to make 
on your own so based on that we will they will this gas cut sheet and all will come in the sheet let's say 1 meter by 2 meter sheet it will come like our cloth is there na they will come it's a tailor made one this is the ready made one in simple way we can tell this is the ready made one it is available in all uh, shops mostly the hardware shop you can get this type of gaskets this one you have to make on your own by standard sizes you can make and then if it is for uh, same like if cost you have to apply this is uh, uh, this is na this is a spiral on gasket this is the uh, costlier one so if it is a uh, low temperature or low service let's say some water service air service a uh, fire water service and then cooling water service na this type of gasket and all not required if you have more money you can go for this gasket if you have less money you can go for this gasket it will also seal there will be no problem it will seal but uh, high temperature high pressure we don't we do not prefer this type of gaskets because uh, some difference is there between these two i will explain so in low temperature service low pressure service cooling water service uh, non standard areas we will go for this type of gaskets and then if it is high temperature na different material is there if rubber gasket is there graphite gasket is there a teflon gasket is there based on the application if it is corrosive one let's say hydrochloric acid you are using or sulfuric acid you are using hydrophoric acid you are using na so that area you can go you cannot go for asbestos or you cannot go for graphite sheet so what you will do you cannot go for spirulon also it will not withstand because spirulon is for high temperature and high pressure not for corrosive corrosive is different a pressure is different so corrosive one you can go for a teflon sheet so uh, if it is low temperature cooling water service you can go for non asbestos if it is steam service uh, it is a, i don't have a gas right now i don't have a gas we can go sheet i have to make means so graphite sheet is there you can make this gasket from the graphite sheet the sheet will be available 1 meter by 2 meter it is available in market like that so based on application we have to select the this gasket the most common material used to manufacture uh, guess sir you see here teflon graphite neoprene neoprene is a kind of rubber neoprene and then some uh, some other type is there so rubber in based on the white on is there so based on that it will differ and then this is spiral wound gasket the name itself is spiral wound gasket i will tell we feature metal sealing element filled with the graphite if you see here na this is the gasket this outer portion we call as a outer ring or we we'll call as a or outer ring this inner portion you see na this is also metal this is inner ring this portion is there na this only a spiral wound this if you see here this one this portion only here they have in, uh, installed this is the graphite material if you see this black color na that is graphite graphite is uh, used for high temperature and mostly it is for high temperature service so they mentioned here um, sorry a ptfe na ptf means poly tetrafluoroethylene so teflon phone okay this spiral gasket only i need but i don't want uh, graphite i want to use in corrosive means yes it is available is a teflon that instead of graphite they will use teflon here and then we can use for uh, corrosive service and then what about this outer ring inner ring so that also you have to uh, choose according to the service if it is uh, corrosive service this id inner ring you have to go for stainless steel if it is uh, corrosive more corrosive you have to go for monal or some other alloy based on the service because already we have wall pipeline in that system so gasket also it will be available so based on the application only we are going to if it is critical we have to go for this gasket if it is non critical we can go for this gasket and then these two this is a ring type gasket this is full face gasket full face means this only area only is going to seal but here it is along i mean uh, throughout the flange body of the flap to body of the flange there will be a gasket it's a full face gasket in this is the hole for connecting the bolt okay so in same this one full face gasket where we can use in the flat face gasket only we can use if it is raised face there will be no meaning of providing gasket this area because this area it is not going to seal your sealing area will be this only because you have seen a flange just now
okay right sorry we have some problem okay ah okay no issue ah uh, here you see na this is the bolt and connecting area this is the sealing area this area only the gasket is going to seat if you provide gasket here there is no use if it is raised face if it is flat face okay we can one one thing one advantage is if you put the gasket na it will not get disturbed because all four points if we get uh, alignment is there so it will not get disturbed where it will need in this full face gasket area so that is the one advantage here but mostly it is not preferable it is it is okay and then uh, we have seen flanges we have seen gaskets and to connect the gasket and another flanges we need uh, fasteners we call it as a fasteners or the bolt and nut there is a two major type we are using in uh, industries one is a machined bolt the top one is a machined bolt with nut second one is a stud bolt the, what is the difference is this nut you can remove in both both side here you can remove this is a a uh, fixed one that is uh, more i mean same material per material this is the nut one you can remove from here only this is the same it is depend upon the application where you need frequent removable so that area you can go for this stud bolt if it is pump flange that that will be some maintenance definitely there will be some maintenance if it is wall definitely there will be some maintenance so that area and all we can go for this stub bend flanges instead of this machined bolt you can use this uh, stub i mean a stub and uh, stub bolt so there are along with that is some washer will be there both side so this is the bolt and nut and then we go into another topic uh, fittings first we have seen in piping components we have seen first we have seen the pipe after that how to connect the pipe with the different uh, type of joints after that uh, major part is a flange we have seen uh, in detail and uh, now the major party piping part is fittings fittings is a common name under fittings there will be uh, different types different types of fittings is there piping elbows this is called elbows piping reducers this will be reducers from one size to another size this will be low uh, i mean id will be less this id will be bigger this is reducer and then overlet connections this is called a overlet some weld overlet will be there cap this is called a cap some crosses will be there crosses the picture uh, here uh, some cross is not there is a four direction means it will be a crosses it's a kind of fittings fittings are different as a piping components that help in pipe routing for directional changes from elbow means from uh, one degree to other 90 degree it will turn the flow from horizontal to vertical from vertical to horizontal from left to right right to left it will change the direction of the flow in piping so commonly used fittings are this a pipe fittings under this elbows uh, 180 bend t's cross caps reducer uh, flanges coupling it is all come here so in this elbow means 45 degree elbow is there you have seen na this is 90 degree same like that 45 degree elbow is also is the available and then 90 degree elbow is available in 90 degree there will be some uh, other two types is there long radius elbow short radius elbow is there long radius means where it is required a smooth turning there will be there will not be any erosion there will be smooth turning short radius means there will be some a pressure loss will be there due to that uh, uh, sharp turn and then 180 degree means it will change the direction not nothing but 45 degree 90 degree 180 degree is used to change the direction of the flow the pipeline is going straight from the pipeline you have to go to the pipeline has to flow has to go to top then you have to use the 90 degree elbow that's it if you go flow pipeline you need to take a 45 degree to climb up you need 45 degree based on the application and our piping design we will choose and then uh, t t is equal t and reducing t is there equal t means nothing but if the pipeline size is 2 inch if you are equal t means another uh, that uh, in t that size also will be a 2 inch if reducing t means from 2 inch you want to reduce the pipeline sizes based on the pressure and velocity calculation then you have to go for reducing t and if you if a common header is there for example if there will be a common header there will be multiple consumers will be there so in that if it is 6 inch you will take 6 by 3 6 by 2 6 by 4 like that it is called reducing t where the size getting reduces it is called a reducing t 
cross is equal cross cross is i will explain later that is four uh, cross will be there and then cap cap is it's a end cap like that blind flange i have seen we have seen na that is a removable front flange but in some cases no i don't want i don't want to remove at all it is will be a permanent header in that area you can go for this cap i will explain and then reducer reducer is uh, it will reduce the pipeline sizes if it is a 8 inch header will be there at the end of the one you have to make it to the uh, some other small bore sizes means you can go for this reducer this redu name itself is there na reducer if it is reverse that one it will be expander that is there it is concentric reducer and eccentric reducer is there that application we will see in upcoming slides and then coupling is there is coupling is a full coupling half coupling reducing coupling it is there we will see one by one um and then elbows first we going to see elbows uh, elbow is used more than any other pipe fittings it provide flexibility to change the pipe direction elbow is mainly available in two standards 90 degree and 45 degree if you see here this is a 01 it is is going 45 so it is a 45 degree in this flow direction is coming here and going turning 90 degree which is called 90 degree based on this uh, degree only it is calling as 90 degree if you want to change the flow direction from 0 to 90 degree from left to right or right to left from top to bottom you can use this elbows so change the direction only we are going to use this elbows and then this is called reducing elbow it's a one uh, rarely a very rare it will be used this type of uh, fittings this 90 degree reducing elbows is designed to change the direction as well as the reduce the pipeline size if this fittings is not there we have to use two fittings first we need to use the elbow and then we have to use the reducer but in instead instead that we if you use this fitting here it is coming so let's say some 3 inch it is coming we are reducing it to the 2 inch so this is called reducing elbow but mostly this it will not come because very rare and then this is 180 bend you have seen na uh, that uh, Uh, chart is a pipe bend it is 180 degree and then it is not a standard elbows in pipe they will bend this one because these are all it's a forged one this is called forged material they will are readily uh, available in market you go anywhere you can get different moc you can get it carbon steel or stainless steel or pvc anywhere you can get this elbow and this is a 180 degree bend flow will come here and we we'll make a u turn and we we'll go here so wherever it is required we can according to the application we can use this one you see here due to their long radius and the smooth change of direction the pipe bend has very less pressure drop because it is having a smooth direction if it is 90 degree elbow what will happen flow will come here it will go here so it will there be a sh sharp turn there will be some pressure loss and the erosion of the elbow will happen so you see in many pipelines there will be a leakage will be in elbow area because in pipeline there will be a sudden change of direction will not be there in elbow it will be change is the direction so erosion will happen due to the velocity erosion will happen based on that it will get leakage compared to pipe elbow will get uh, leakage very easily and then low pressure drop and a smooth flow of fluid and pig is possible pig is nothing but that uh, pigging we are doing a cleaning the pipes that is a pig because if it is pig if you travel here it will be smoothly turn and then d is the pipe is 3d 5d 5 is 5 3 into diameter of the pipe that is the turn we are mentioning 3d 5d like that based on the application we will get that one and then in elbow it is a miter bend it is a pre i mean uh, fabricated one like uh, we have seen gasket na tailor made one and ready made one it is a tailor made one if it is high if we go for a, if it is 2 inch 3 inch up to 10 inch na we can go for a ready made one because it is available in market with affordable cost but if you go for like if you go for 600 mb mean 24 inch 30 inch uh, 36 inch and then your pressure rating will be very less so going to handling only cooling water because in most of the industries cooling water and raw water services will be uh, higher sizes let's say 24 inch and uh, 30 inches in that area you cannot go for uh, ready made elbows because it will cost you more with a forged material na it will cost you will be more in that cases what we will do we will take a pipe that pipe also will be from the rolled plate because 
it is a low pressure we cannot go for pipe because if we go for standard pipe the cost will be more so we will go for sometime we will go for a tailor made sheet um, plate we will buy the plate we will roll the plate and we will do the welding that is welded pipe we will call it is a low pressure and a low critical service we will use it in the plate we will cut this one uh, miter bend elbows this is a uh, all our depends upon the applications and where we are going to use that only we have to apply here because why i am telling this all now because while choosing a material or choosing the moc obviously we can choose moc because in steam service we cannot going to provide the rubber one we are obviously we are going to provide a carbon steel one or steel one but other fittings where we are going to use that we have to apply our mind where are you going to connect to the turbine that you cannot weld with the turbine because it's a equipment will be a frequent maintenance will be there and you have to overall will be there so you have to disconnect from the pipeline so that area you cannot choose for welding uh, no no it is a critical one steam service i want to do welding it is not a uh, correct way it is not a good engineering practice so based on the application you have to decide same like that this elbow is uh, 30 inch i will go for miter bend for a high pressure uh, crude service and all na it is not recommendable so two thing you have to keep in mind a uh, service then pressure rating temperature rating and the application that we are going to use and then ultimately cost is there like uh, this picture show it is a t it is a equal t this is a reducing t i am going little bit fast we are already delay so anything is a tomorrow also we can catch up no problem this is a equal t equal t is an equal t and then this is the bar barred t we will call this a bar t here some bar will be there for pigging and all na for a varieties Uh, it is not allowable because if we send the pig to here it may travel here so that that area we call uh, we will use this bar t this is a lateral t where we no need of uh, tapping this is the flow we need a 45 degree tapping means we no need to take a weldable it is readily available and then this one is cross i have mentioned now cross this is a four way flow if coming here you can take flow it anywhere i mean any side you can take this is the cross according to the application but this is very rare we will use it in industries very rare and then this is reducer this reducer changes the pipe size size of the pipe there are two types of reducers i earlier explained na this is reducer let's say this is high bore pipe and then is a low bore, low say low bore this is a, let's say it's a 4 inch it will be a 2 inch this will be a reducer there will be a two type of reducer concentric reducer as a conical reducer this is the, the picture is showing na this is a concentric reducer it maintains the center line elevation of the pipeline where the center lines of the larger smaller pipelines are to be maintained in the same you see here this is the center line we are connecting 4 inch here we are connecting 2 inch here even though we are changing the size of the pipe the center line of the pipe will not there will not be any change it's a concentric reducer so on the see you are here it is a eccentric reducer there will be here also there will be some change in pipe sizes let's see here la pipe size is more here pipe size is less but the center line will be uh, different this is center this 3 in center line will be go here this 2 in center line go we come here so this is a different and not only this is based on the uh, structure i am telling but mostly in a horizontal pump we are going to connect our horizontal pipelines na we will use this type of eccentric reducers and then here uh, swage reducers swage reducers nothing like small in size na we call it as a swage reducer but nothing but it is a reducer in industry we call it as a swage reducer this also concentric uh, this one is eccentric for small bore sizes uh, from 1 uh, and a half inch or less than 1 uh, and a half inch sizes we will go for uh, this type of swage reducer socket weld also it is available not this is showing here butt weld socket weld reducer also it is available and then this is pipe cap before we have seen that blind flanges right that where we are it is frequent maintenance or flushing it is required in future you want to do any inspections there you are going to use blind flange but uh, in some other cases you need no no it is very critical we cannot put flange because flange will be there is a possible for leakages because due to stop and start frequent stop and start na that gasket will get expand pipe will get expand so the gasket area there will be a chance for leakages in those services we will go for this uh, end cap 
we will weldable it is weldable end cap is nothing but this is a see if you see here this is a weldable portion pipe will be connecting here we will weld this one it's a butt weld weld cap socket weld weld cap also it is available all based on the application only no no issue that one this why it is coming stub bend uh, we already seen this one stub bend this one is a weldable area with the pipe this is a, before weld the pipe we will put that uh, lab joint and then we will weld it this is a lab joint that means stub bend and then we have seen uh, first i have shown up uh, pipes some flanges and then the fittings and then i have told a union i mean uh, couplings so under that this is called a union we will call it is a union union are used as a alternative to flanges connections because in flange na it will take some time you need gasket you need fasteners if it is corroded it will be problem to replace it you have to frequently have to replace it and then flange cost is also very high so you want to in low critical service some cooling water service raw water service if it is low bore sizes because if it is uh, big bore sizes na you cannot open this nut so in small sizes let's say less than mostly it will be used in one inch under one inch below half an inch 3 by 4 inch one inch only we are using this uh, piping union this this portion will be uh, connecting to the one end of the pipe another this portion will be connecting to the other end of the pipe so this is the connecting uh, nut to this one this one only we will connect to the male this portion will be have a male end and the female male thread this nut will have a female thread we will connect it so here pipe will connect bottom of the one it can pipe will get connected then we will uh, connect this nut whenever you want to remove you can remove this only this nut and you can disconnect the pipeline so let's say from pump we have to give seal connection uh we have to give cooling water connection so in those uh, in those areas na for pump hardly we will use half an inch or 3 by 4 inch only in those connections we will prefer these types of uh, union fittings and then pipe nipple uh, this applicate this picture is showing na this is kind of nipple this is a uh, one end threaded this is both uh, both end threaded one end threaded means okay we are going to use in a pressure gauge so here pipeline will come so one end of the pipeline we will weld with this nipple other will be free to connect the pressure gauges this nipple <coughs> where both side you want to get remove so the those area we have to use this pipe uh, threaded uh, nipple so we can use this union na it will connect here another portion will connect here so it will be easy to removable this is called uh, pipe nipple and then coupling we have seen there will be a, a three types of coupling full coupling half coupling reducing coupling full coupling is used for connecting small bore pipes for example if you are connecting 2 inch and i mean 1 and 1/2 inch and below sizes we will go for uh, this type of coupling because this one we no need alignment if you do butt weld na you need alignment you need road gap everything if it is low pressure why we need to go for butt welding you have to go for socket weld to go for socket weld you need some socket area this is the pipe this is the other pipe you have to connect these two pipes so we need that area a full coupling here you can do fillet weld here you can do fillet weld and then half coupling half coupling used for small bore branching from a vessel or large pipe it can be threaded or socket type this is the uh, half coupling where if you are taking tapping for pressure gauges if it is 6 inch pipe then will be there in that you have to take one tapping you have to take a half an inch in that area you cannot go for 6 by half an inch reduce uh, t you cannot go like that because it cost us more if you have to go for half an inch tapping only you are going to take for pressure gauge why we need to go for that t that is not a recommendable one so we will go for this kind of half coupling we will this one portion we will do with the parent metal that is 6 inch pipe and then this portion we will use as a, a small bore pipe and we will weld at the this portion and then reducing coupling used to two different sizes of pipe here will be some uh, one inch pipe is coming here this area we are going to use half an inch only so that area you cannot put you no need to put that socket weld i mean butt weld reducer you have seen in picture na butt weld reducer no need here reducing coupling is readily available so again and again i am telling it is depend upon the application if it is uh, high corrosive service we cannot go for this type of coupling we have to go for butt weld even though it is a half an inch or 3 by 4 inch that uh, butt weld reducers i mean fitting sand are available only thing is cost is high but uh, based on the service 
we have to go for but well type means we have we must go for the but well type no other option and this is socket weld and threaded pipe fittings like uh, i explain in but weld na it is in before we have seen in uh, these things na cross elbows everything na so same like that it is in the socket weld type but weld is already i hope that uh, training has conducted but will be connecting to the uh, same bore size pipe i mean uh, fittings or pipes together this is socket weld means pipe will go inside of the fitting and you have to do only the fillet weld but weld mean but weld means you can uh, that the weld joint you can do ndt socket weld means you cannot do ndt you can do only dpt and then the pipe will go inside the fitting you can do only the fillet joint so this is socket weld cross this is socket weld elbow uh, this is socket weld union union i have so i have seen i mean we have uh, discussed about that uh, threaded one here it is a socket weld one same like that here this is threaded elbow so different types of elbow available what are the elbows but weld elbows available socket weld elbows available and then this threaded weld elbow also available all this is based on the application only if it is frequent maintenance will be there frequent every day i mean every month we are going to remove or uh, it is low service means we can go for threaded one if it is a, a critical one mean high pressure one but it is low pro, low uh, low bore size we can go for socket weld because high bore pipe we have to test the weld joint we can go for butt weld so any size it is available no i need a socket weld but i need in 3 inch means yes it is available but it is a very rare it is available no i need half an inch pipe i need but weld only yes it is also available and then this is a isometric drawing here you can see this uh, isometric drawing we have prepared uh, here you see na this is elbow the pipe is coming from uh, vertical i mean downward it is coming and we have to take to the some other elevation this elevations let's say this is some elevation a uh, 1 meter this elevation we recorded 3 meter this is you see they here mentioned na elevation plus 18 so it means 18 meter it will come so this pipe is coming from some other elevation so we have to increase the <coughs> elevation means we need to put the elbow and then pipe we have to uh, use this elbow here this joint na it is showing as a butt weld if it is socket weld it will be different uh, legend will be there this is butt weld this is butt weld 90 degree elbow and then it is coming here this is reducer from this post this pipe to this pipe there will be a concentric expander light like itself uh, reducer if it is flow going here we will call it as a reducer if the flow is coming here is called as a expander because based on the flow only the name it is nothing that it is a reducer only so here here it is concentric expander this is 1 uh, inch this is 2 inch that why we mentioning 2 inch by 1 inch and then it is coming here again we are using the 90 degree butt weld elbow its good flow is going here sorry and then here it is the valve it is there this valve also butt weld valve mostly that valve will be a flanged in mostly also there will be some threaded in here based on the application based on the client requirement based on the industries where we are going to use we have made as a uh, weldable weldable one and then this valve we will see in other presentation based on how we represent in isometric we will see uh, next topic i mean by tomorrow and then here it is the t it is there it is the equal t there will not be if it is unequal t we will uh, mention 2 by 1 or 3 by 2 like that we will mention if you see here this is 2 inch this is also 2 inch so it will be a equal t and then it is a uh, 90 degree turn but weld elbow based on the legend i am telling this is a but weld socket will be a different uh, type and then here for is going here for graphic i mean representation i am showing this slide in this isometric you can see the number part number it is there sizes it is mentioned full specification here we have mentioned you see pipe a312 grade tp304 304 means stainless steel pipe 316 is there 316l is there this is 304 pipe and then asme standard did we have mentioned and then schedule 40 schedule 40 is a thickness we have mentioned so how much quantity 4.5 meter in this isometric this 2 inch pipe is, is we required 4.5 meter only sorry and then this 1 inch pipe we required only 0.3 meter 
in this 2 inch 90 degree elbow elbow also same full specification we have to mention here based on this only we have to purchase the material pipe or whatever it is this is a only one isometric drawing from the whole project there will be some uh, thousand isometrics will be there from the thousand isometric each isometric we will take this uh, bill of material we call it as a bill of material from this bill of material we will consolidate mto and then we will uh, filter it we will see 2 inch pipe how much meter 1 inch pipe how much meter in spec wise we have to uh, cat uh, category we have to uh, separate one this one is 90 degree elbow this is 1 inch 90 degree elbow this is a reducer what size it will be there here they mentioned 5 it is 5 if you see this is the concentric uh, reducer this is one number how many number in this isometric it is one number that only so here if you see here a valve valve also they have mentioned two inch ball wall ss304 like that quantity how many one number this is the uh, ball wall by legend we can say this is the ball wall tomorrow i will explain in clear valve says how many number one number the globe wall this is globe wall how many numbers it is a one number so bold net m16 or m14 into 85 means what are all the how many quantity it is required so we have to mention here Mm, and then uh, let's see gasket means how many gasket it is required actually it's not required but somewhere you missed it one and then this piping in uh, 3d we have mentioned this is a 2d representation here it is the 3d representation for the piping component i want to show this one this is the tank here flange we are connecting here this is a weldable uh, pipe with the flange and then it is coming here elbow it's called elbow 90 degree elbow we have seen now this is 90 degree elbow so we have to change the elevation again we are using the one elbow and then we want to change the direction because this flow is coming from uh, horizontal to downwards again downwards we need to take to the horizontal portion but different elevation so to change elevation we need elbow to change the direction of flow we need this elbow it is coming here it's isolation valve it's a strainer it is connected to the pump so this pump is removable bone and then we are using this flange and then here also discharge side also we need to removable one and then we are used one flange you see here this flange because this valve may create a problem in future because valve may get struck or valve may get uh, service so we need this uh, flange arrangement so there is called flange are all provided elbow and all provided okay another 15 minutes only is there you can fitting standard this one these are all uh, fitting standard only we can read from this presentation uh, and another thing i want to highlight here is coated and lined one some area we have seen some stub end flanges some area vessel will be there so vessel i want to fabricate one big vessel with the alloy steel or with the monol na it will be cost will be more so in that what we will do we will do the cladding where the material is going to get contact that area only we will put in the ss material or monol material and then after that we will provide the carbon seal material so uh, two purpose we can solve it so corrosive also you can take care with the stainless steel and the pressure you need thickness so if you go for that much thickness 1 inch 25 mm thickness you cannot go for a monol material or a stainless steel material because it cost us more so in that case we'll go for carbon steel inside there will be a liner that will be a stainless steel or teflon if you go for whole vessel in teflon strength is not enough same like material cost will be high so in that area we will go for coated or lined or clamped fittings or vessels i am telling about vessels some fittings also available some in our residential also you have seen na some pvc pipe it will be some inside there will be some brass fittings or some other uh, copper fittings it will be there that will be a cl cladding one this is just a standard one only you can read from this one branch fittings yeah we will uh take time so today we today we will go for a, a question and answer sessions this uh, pending these slides now i will cover by tomorrow tomorrow also i am going to take we will cover that one with uh, along with that uh, valves um anupama uh thank you thank you mr chandra mohan thank you for uh, such an informative and inspiring session we can proceed with the q and a session now okay we have some 20 questions uh, the first question is what is penetrating testing 
penetrating test means uh, a di penetrant penetrating test means uh, we call it is a, a di penetrant if you see from weldable uh, material we welding the material together you have to spray some chemical uh, we have we call it as a uh, penetrant and developer something is there if you spray any thin fluid na it will if you like kerosene or diesel like petrol products it will penetrate through the weldable material and then we have to apply the developer after clean that uh, penetrant we have to apply the developer the developer is nothing but some powder form it will uh, coated on that material wherever it is get coated na it will coat on the outer surface only wherever the penetrant is developed inside the weld material it will be indicate some wet surface it will be shown that is called the penetrant test okay and the next question if gasket is stationary seal why it is termed as mechanical seal can stationary seal uh, be mechanical seals no mechanical seal is just name only uh, actually rotary uh, is asking gasket it is uh, gasket is not a uh, rotary part that is called it is a stationary seal rotary part is seal is there actually actually that one uh, we cannot uh, gasket we cannot call as a mechanical seal it is a static seal only mechanical seal we will call as a rotary part in uh, pump area we will use uh, some uh, mechanical seals rotary phase and stationary phase will be there that one is a mechanical seal actually it is a static seal only the so name only mechanical seal but it is static seal okay uh, what precaution should be taken during weld neck flange installation it is a bell neck flange installation is nothing but a butt weld joint that one like uh, pipe to pipe what are all the precautions we are taking same only because bell neck flange uh, we are if you are using a pipe with uh, schedule 80 let's say bell neck flange also it is available same size with the same schedule so the thickness will be the same uh, what are the method we are following pipe to pipe join the same method only we are going to join in the bell neck flange that is no different at all okay uh fillet weld only involves joining the corner points of the metal is that it's correct is that correct correct okay uh can weld neck flanges be used in corrosive environments ah uh, we can use it we based on the moc only we can use it no problem because because weld neck flange is the uh, type only because we can do that uh, test uh, nt test or the test we can take on the butt weld so that is only with a type of weldment only we can use in corrosive surface if it is moc is same if what is the pipe moc we are using the same moc if we are uh, choose the flange we can use it no issue that one okay uh, does extreme low temperatures like uh, cryogenic determine the selection of weld and flange kindly share some example so sorry madam come again uh, does extreme low temperatures like cryogenic uh, okay. cryogenic determine the selection of weld and flange if any example is that please share it uh, cryogenic because weld neck flange is just i am uh, on to explain one thing uh, so many questions regarding to weld neck flange i explain one thing weld neck flange is that type of connection only weld neck if you see that images that portion will be a pipe at the end of the weld neck area there will be a it is like pipe only pipe to pipe how we are using that one same only we are going to use based on the service it will not vary it is a type of flange only it is a weldable i mean butt weld type that only there is no different in that what are the pipe we are using pipe to pipe how we are connecting na same only we are going to connect here there is no different in that it's a connecting uh, flange only okay uh like someone uh, someone in the participant was told at an industrial visit that uh, gasket once used once that is once pipe is open is discarded after that is it true for both non uh, asbestos and spiral wound yes it is true because once that gasket thickness normally it will be uh, 3 mm the standard one is 3 mm thickness if you use in between the flanges and you compress with that uh, fasteners na it will seal in the flange area flange area there will be some serration will be there so it will seal in that area it will get uh, damaged so once if you use that gasket you cannot use again both okay. in both gaskets okay 
uh, why is spiral gasket named as gasket please tell again explain again no oh, uh, spiral uh, okay right gasket we are differing um, differing to two types right our nays uh, uh, i mean flat face gasket i mean i mean uh, non asbestos gasket tailor made gasket and the second one is ready made gasket right or it is a spiral wound gasket the name itself it is mentioning spiral wound spirally it is wound together because if you see that graphite material not only that graphite material in between the graphite material there will be a ss sp spiral ss material will be there in that it will graphite will be packed in that one the name why why it is coming spiral wound means it spirally wounded together like we are wounding some teflon type na same like that it is wounded together the graphite material after that one ss foil after graphite material after ss foil like that based on the thickness it will wound together that is called a spiral wound again name came from that uh, method of construction only okay can full face be used in male and female flange connection no it is not recommendable if you use also it will get broke broken that area okay it is not a recommendable one. but uh, full face gasket it is uh, only where we can use now that is flat face area we can use that uh, based on the face type flat face area you can use and then where that uh, gasket may get disturbed if it is vertical portion the gasket you cannot uh, position it properly where it is congested it is you cannot position it properly while tightening the bolt net it may get down and may get uh, dislocate from area so those kind of area you can go for a full face gasket and a flat face flanges you can go for a full face gasket okay uh, explain in detail on a stub bolt and machined bolt uh, machined bolt is in the same material if you say for example uh, A 16 mm bolt we are going to use M16. We call it as a metric thread. Now it is a M16 we are using. That is an example. So it will be machined from the solid material. They they will take from 20 mm rod. They will machine the uh, that portion where we are going to um, install in that uh, flange. Now that area only they will machine and then the one end only it has threaded. So it will be a machined one. And it is called as a machined bolt we are calling that one. so that one where we will use now is a where it is a permanent joint where it is a high torque is required that area we will use the a uh, machined bolt stub end bolt means we no need to if you have m16 bolt means we need not to go for a higher size bar i mean solid bar then only they will machine to the m16 na same like that we are no no need to do here we can go for m16 uh, stud m16 stud itself then we can make the threaded it's a full thread stud we can call it as a full threaded stud in both side nut will be a removable one for example if you uh, for example if you are connecting to the pump they will uh, pump they will manufacture nozzle to the casing we will close clearance only in that area if you use cannot you cannot use the machined bolt net so in that area you can use is the stub end where you can remove the bolt net if while if you are using this uh, stud bolt for long more than 5 years like that na so that area bolt will be get corroded if it is used machined bolt net you cannot uh, nut tool can, cannot open from one end if it is machine uh, stub end you can both side you can open the nut any nut is free it will come so it will be one advantage only and then frequent uh, removable where it is required that area will go for uh, stub i mean uh, stub end bolt it's a full threaded stud nothing but okay uh, is u bend shell and tube hex an example of 180 degree bend sorry madam shell shell and uh, tube yeah is u bend shell uh, and tube hex h e x x an example of 180 degree bend uh, where are your the question man where i can like uh, maybe like it is some water irrelevant i guess is asking whether u bend shell and tube hex an example of 180 degree bend oh uh, i think they are asking about uh, uh exchanger or not i am not clear the question is not clear actually maybe he they are okay. asking is you bent shell and you bent shell and tube exchanger uh -huh. heat exchanger an example of 180 degree bend ah yes correct it is correct okay. that u tube is uh, change direction right? it is one it is a 180 degree correct okay bad t only used for pigging line any other uses is there 
mostly it will be bare duty itself it is not uh, i have never uh, used that one but uh, only in pigging area only mostly they will use no other area they will not uh, use i don't see okay uh, please explain in, uh, in brief about the selection of flanges flanges based on service fluid and pressure rating example i am asking example explain uh, about the selection of flanges based on service fluid and pressure rating okay service fluid means uh, for example uh, flange was selecting okay right first we need to see the moc of the flange if it is steam service the high temperature so you cannot go for a pvc service i mean pvc moc so based on the service if it is high temperature you can go for carbon seal only if it is low temperature you can go for Uh, if it is uh, cooling water service you can go for uh, pvc also same time uh, service fluid means uh, if it is a corrosive service okay let's say hydro uh, hydrochloric acid or uh, sulfuric acid if you are using you cannot go for the if it is a critical service but you cannot go for the uh, carbon steel flanges that obviously you can go for the hdpe pipe hdpe material or uh, teflon material or pvc so same like that uh, you are asking service fluid and uh, uh, what uh, corrosive fluid so if corrosive fluid means there will not be any temperature if it is temperature there will not be any temperature if it is corrosive fluid go for teflon or hdpe or uh, pvc or upvc like that if it is uh, uh, service means uh, for uh, service wise it will be a same only carbon steel means it will be same only based on the pressure rating only if it is steam Uh, 40 bar you are using you can go for uh, 600 pound rating or 900 pound rating like that if it is cooling water one you can go for 150 pound rating and then the type of flange slip on flange or socket will one it will vary that's it one okay the next question concentric versus eccentric other than consideration of cavitation any other factor to consider while choosing one of them uh, mostly yes not a cavity is yes. Uh, cavitation where we are using that uh, <coughs> concentric uh, eccentric uh, sorry concentric reducer is at the suction side of the pump only we will use that uh, concentric reducer mostly why we choose that concentric uh, sorry eccentric reducer is sorry in suction of the pipe a pump we will use eccentric reducer flat face at the uh, top so because there will be some formation of bubbles is there initially we went it will go through that vent so that area we will use the eccentric type in vertical portion where we are using the vertical pipelines there we will use concentric reducer because there will be central line it will it will not get change mostly so based on the application if it is horizontal one we are going to uh, control valve we are going to connect or other valve we are going to connect means there will be mostly eccentric reducer if it is vertical line mostly it will be a concentric reducer okay uh how do we decide the size of reducer expander and uh, other piping equipment that is based on the our our calculation piping calculation we will do that uh, if suppose for example <clears throat> based on the pressure only okay uh, from suction uh, from discharge one pump is there that the header you have to connect to the two different type of uh, tank okay so if it is two two tank you have to uh, take the flow to uh, same requirement same capacity of the tank we have to fill the tank in that area we will use the uh, equal t like that if it is ready uh, at the end of uh, the header we are consuming so many uh, consumers we are connecting so many consumers at the end of the header there will not be much flow so obviously there will be to reduce the cost of the pipeline we will go for the one reducer and we will connect to the end user that is uh, mainly on the piping uh, calculation only we will come to know because velocity and pressure will come into the picture so that one while piping calculation only we can uh, conclude the reducer okay uh, next question why is pipe cap is round and not straight like blind end ah uh, that one is uh, okay they are asking uh, like a plate they are asking okay okay understand it is a uh, in high pressure uh, rating uh, i think uh, that one that one tomorrow i will come, come back that one not clear yeah okay the question I, i asked before 
Uh, tomorrow I am only going to take. I will explain that one. Okay. Uh, the next question: Pipe nipple versus spool. Many difference and uses. Are they even comparable? Pipe spool. Pipe nipple versus spool. Uh -huh. Ah, spool means they will call generally uh, flange to flange. They will we will call it as a spool. A uh, pipe nipple is a threaded end. That is the major so difference. They are not comparable, right? Are not comparable. Okay. What is the software used in three D piping design? What software means? Yeah. What What is the software used uh, for three three D piping design? Three D piping we use plan three D uh, PDMS Navis Works. We are going to we will use. But uh, those uh, engineering application and software, uh, we are going to upcoming days, we are going to see 10th uh, August, we are going to see in detail. So that time we will explain in um, uh, very much in detail. So right now, plan 3D, PDMS, uh, Navy's work uh, we are using. Okay. So, okay. And another participant is asking uh, to help them interpret that uh, he have seen 1.5 into NPS on the slides. Is it a mode of labeling or calculating? One, uh, not clear, 1.5? Like I have seen like 1.5 into capital NPS on one of the slide. He just wanted to know what it is. Ah, that is a, maybe could be inches. 1.5 means it may be a inches I see. Into or a inches. So it is labeled for some any other equipment or? A... No, no, it is a fitting one. Fitting one. Okay. Fitting, it's a fitting. Okay. So these are the questions we have for today. Uh, participants, do you have any further questions? You can unmute yourself and ask. Okay. Hope we don't have any other further doubts or queries. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chandramogan. Thanks for your uh, patience for understanding, uh, for answering all the questions in detail and for uh, such an elaborative session. Thank you. Thank you all the participants. Uh, this session will be continued tomorrow at the same time. So uh, you will be having an assessment on today's training tomorrow uh, by tomorrow 11 a.m. Link will be shared by email. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Mr. Chandramogan. Thanks once again.